Okay, so um, I'll over to you, Ratana. Thank you so much. It's such a wonderful thing to be able to get together once again to talk about Girls Who Fish Japan. Last time we did this, I had to do it from, well, I did it once from St. John's, another time from Thailand, and now I am actually in Shimizu, Shisoka, um, to do this. And uh, so it is really wonderful. And I wish I could be in the room, but the connection is really not good. So I'm, I'm thinking that to be safe, we do it here, but I would walk over to the building very soon, right? Once the session starts, just to meet with all the great uh, girls who fish Japan. So Yunji, this is such a wonderful um, event that you're putting together. So it's been a really good day of talking about what we need to do to build back to build forward better for small scale fisheries. And today we had a session about uh, uh, adjusting gender lens. And there were many good conversation about what do we need to do different? What we need to do better in order to really make roles of women and girls more visible and make their presence matter. So I think we have uh, great um, speakers here with us tonight and also uh, a lot of panel discussion that is gonna be happening. Yinji, would you like to just say a few things uh, at this time or you want, uh, you want to just invite our speakers to start? Or you want- I think, I, I, uh, I, yeah. Yeah. I think yeah, uh, let's just invite um, the speakers to have the, yes, the speech. Yeah. Great, okay. Mm. Um, and, and what's the order of this presentation again? Is it Katia first or Kimberly first? Okay, uh, Katia comes first, and then the Kimberly, and me a little. Yes, that's <laughs> yes. what I thought. Okay, perfect. So Katia, you, are, you would be able to share your screen and make a presentation. Do you see my screen? I no. I don't see it yet. This is, uh, yeah, it is your screen, but it's um, folders, <laughs> not presentation yet. Oh. We see a lot of, yeah, we see your folders. Could you? Yes, open? but the, me, I see that's the problem. Ah. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, why are you working on that? Let me, um, let me, perhaps I should do this. I'll read a little bit about the girl who fished Japan. Although I know that um, maybe uh, Jinji would also look at, uh, talk about this, but basically, uh, oh, there you go. But just, just, a, just a couple of words about this, right? This is really inspired by the Canadian Girls Who Fish program in Petty Harbor. So the second speaker would be able to speak to that. But the fact that we are here in Shizuoka is really to celebrate um, the 80 years all gathered together once a month at the Moshimune Fishing Community in Shizuoka and the experience of the hands-on learning about fisheries and fishing communities. So there's a lot of history why this is important. So let's start from, you know, the reason why we invited Katia to speak is because Katia is uh, a well-known uh, gender specialist, has been working in, uh, in Asia, also in Japan, including in Thailand and also in Europe. So lots of uh, uh, on the ground, um, you know, exposure to some of these issues. So Katya, um, and it is really important to focus a little bit on equality, gender equality. So Katya, over to you. Go ahead, please. I will try. Do you hear me? Yes, I guess. It's perfect. Uh, okay. Uh, of gender equality in fisheries, uh, it's a long time that we speak about it, and I don't want to give a really long speech. A lot of you, you know me that uh, I am speaking too much. So I will try to be fast and uh, tell you what we have and what we need to do in the future. Uh, on research perspective and also on women or women actions and so on. So first of all, oh God. this is one, a nice picture from woman uh, vessel in Greece. So first of all, what is gender? 
in fact, uh, uh, gender is, n- is not uh, the biological characteristic men and women, but is referring to the relation concept. Uh, it's a relational concept referring to socially and culturally construct identities. So it's not a men and women, but what uh, are the relation between men and women? If we are doing research or we have a development project from for countries in places where we have development project and we want to do gender, we should uh, do an exa- um, a systematic gathering and examination of information on gender difference and social relations. And we need that uh, to identify understand and redress inequalities based on gender. So that means that uh, we have to look, uh, if we go to the communities, what women are doing and what men are doing and which type of relations they maintain between them. It's the same if we go on a fishing vessel, we have to, if there are women, we have to look uh, which task is done by women and which task that are that are due by men. Uh, in, uh, it's the same in all the fisheries value chain. We have to look at what women are doing and what men are doing. And often all these roles are complementary. Uh, some things are done by women, other things are done by men in the same family, in the same fishing enterprise, etc. So this is very is fundamental if we want to do gender especially in uh, in fisheries here you have women are uh, sorting out oyster is in japan is in uh, close to hiroshima and we see all these ladies there is only one man and they are uh, foreigner labor uh, the picture is of kumi sorry i didn't put but sorry kumi uh, so but if uh, the idea the perfect idea is that uh, all of us, where we go to the communities, we look what men and women are doing. But in the reality, until now, we have only very little research done on the women issues. Um, so how we do to fill this, uh, this gap? Uh, in our site as researcher, we try to publish uh, uh, as much we can. Uh, articles about uh, gender, the gender dimension. So the TBTI gender cluster published two special issues in the Maritime Studies Journal. Uh, we have around, if my memory is good, 20, 25 articles uh, coming from different countries, uh, South, uh, North, uh, Yes, and the East part, uh, like Japan, uh, we have an article on Japan, uh, if I am good. So, and then there is another uh, uh, journal, the Gender, Place and Culture Journal has also a special issue on gender. And of course, we publish articles, uh, quite a lot of articles, uh, either in books, TBTI in books, usually they have always one or two articles uh, on gender. The book published by Yinji in Japan has uh, more than two articles on gender. And then we have all the articles uh, published in other journals on which I don't refer here. So here it's a uh, shellfish owner. I just, the picture is just to show that there are women. So if we don't want to see them, we don't see them. But if we want, we can see. Uh, in the other hand, uh, women in fisheries uh, by their own start uh, in different initiatives. Uh, for example, uh, the European Union uh, fisher wife and partners uh, claim the recognition of their invisible contribution. They are women who work in, in, the, fish, in the family enterprise, particularly in small scale fisheries or in small aquaculture units. 
And these uh, women, they are working, contribute to the family enterprise for free. Uh, I think in Japan, you have uh, almost the same uh, role of women in uh, small companies. And these women are, are not recognized in Europe. So since uh, um, 1998, the women, they get a recognition of this uh, work and uh, they benefit of uh, social security and uh, social rights in fisheries, but no salary. Then in uh, women around the world, the women in fisheries, they organize themselves in organizations at national or regional level. Uh, we have uh, organization in Japan, Spain, France, Norway, Australia, we have the European and we have organization in Caribbean countries and in Latin America. Um, there is a network. Uh, in the other side, we have organizations of women working in harvesting, particularly in harvesting and shellfish farming. Uh, and this organization are here to discuss the particular needs of women, uh, access to resource, capital and resources, uh, natural resources, fish or, uh, or in the decision-making of the activities and uh, working competitions uh, and uh, the clothing that they use. And uh, here I can take uh, the example of Spain where we have uh, such organization working on uh, shellfish, uh, gathering on food. And uh, now in France, uh, uh, the women working on the fishing vessels, owners of fishing vessels, they establish their own organization to promote uh, their own rights and also to train uh, uh, the future crew members of fishing vessels. The women working again in France, the women working in on the shore, which are uh, shellfish uh, uh, harvesters or shellfish farmers and uh, seaweed harvesters in Bretagne, in the area I am living, they build an organization, a network, where we they discuss uh, the difference uh, uh, on the working conditions and the difference between men and women. And uh, they try to, to explain that they need more ergonomic uh, um, place to work, uh, to be linked to the women uh, uh, strength uh, and uh, abilities. And uh, this is a new, really for, for, for me in Europe, it's a new uh, perspective to look women in, uh, in, uh, in fisheries working on fishing boats. Uh, here I want to make a little the link uh, with uh, what it's Kimberly is doing in uh, in uh, in uh, in Canada and uh, what Ginji is doing in Japan. Uh, here in France, uh, uh, when uh, people who need who will become fisher on fishing vessel working on, on board of fishing vessels need to go to school. And uh, from what it seems that uh, the professor at school, but even the boys in the same classes uh, try to tell the girls, don't go to work on fishing vessel uh, because uh, it's very difficult for women. There are no toilets, uh, they are not, uh, uh, it's not an easy job, or it's a very heavy job. And so they want to prevent them to go on fishing boat. But behind the mind of men is, is the idea that if women are on board, they will not be able physically to work and men have, have to do their job. So, and that is preventing really the girls to go to work on board of fishing vessels. So that we have to have it in mind. Here we see a Maltese woman, she's a vessel owner and she is the skipper of the boat. And of course she employs men as we see there, that they work for her. 
So in, uh, on the research uh, point, uh, what we need to do more, if we take the FAO guidelines, uh, is uh, the recognize the women participation in the small scale fisheries value chain from the beginning, from pre-harvesting to post-harvesting. Then we have to look at all uh, um, the human well-being uh, and intersecting with other issues. And then all the governments, women participation in the decision making. And that this is really coming from the, I, I think you spoke about the FAO, small scale fisheries guidelines during this Congress. So I hope all of you, you are familiar with that. But if we look just only this, we need to understand what women and men are doing in fisheries. Um, and not only, and also we have to look on that on household, the women and men participation within the household. Uh, explore and understand the inequalities and discrimination discrimination between men and women. That it's also very important on what we need to know. And the reason of inequalities and discrimination if we want to go further. And inform about the inequalities help, helps to target objective for solving the difference in, between men and women and design actions that contribute to eliminate and decrease the discrimination. For that, we need data. Everywhere we go, we all of us, they ask us for data. Oh. And uh, we know that we have uh, very little quantitative data. And this quantitative data is available maybe in Northern countries than Southern countries. That is not always true. But uh, if we don't have this data, please, we have to look for qualitative data to fill the, the problem. Here I just saw some uh, one picture on women organizations. Women are member of organization. And uh, it's the European Network of Women in Fisheries meeting in 2020. And uh, thank you very much to hear me. Thank you so much, uh, Katia, for that indeed. There's a lot of talks, a lot of research, but there's still a lot of gaps, right? And as you yes. say, one of the points is about the data and you know, gender disaggregated data is something that many countries do not yet do. So therefore mm -hmm. we need to think about what we need to do in order to you know, organize the way data mm -hmm. is collected. Um, but data might not be the only thing, right? There's a lot of other ways to improve the visibility of women. So we're going to turn to Kimberly, who will be speaking about her experience from working with girls and women in fisheries and within the fishing community. So Kimberly, thank you so much once again for inspiring Girls Who Fish Japan and serve as a very good role model for all of us. Please go ahead with your presentation. Hello, good evening everyone in Japan. And if you're joining from North America, like I am, it's uh, bright and early in the morning. And, um, and thank you so much, Katia, for um, you know, reminding me what um, all of the researchers do to share and tell the story and get the story out there about um, women in the boats and how important it is to move women into the boats and what women are doing on shore and all of that very important invisible work um, that uh, women have always done in the fishery. And, and so I'm going to share my screen with you. And um, and talk a little bit about Girls Who Fish Canada. And so um, something that many of us are, um, would like to do, but few of us have the opportunity to do, which is to go out and touch the surface of an iceberg. So here's uh, one of our Girls Who Fish members getting that very opportunity. And you can see the surface of the iceberg is dimpled like a golf ball. Um, and I, I guess that helps it move through the water and move through the air very much like the dimpled surface 
uh, creates that aerodynamic surface of the golf ball. It's very beautiful and unsuspecting. Here's our beautiful spot right in the middle of Petty Harbor. And Yinji and her daughter, Mi, has been here and we do miss them. <laughs> um, and you can see that we're right in the center of the community. So whatever we do there, everybody can, even though they may not join us, they can see exactly what we're doing. Fishing for Success sponsors the Girls Who Fish program here in Petty Harbor, Newfoundland and Labrador. And Fishing for Success is a nonprofit social enterprise that works to transmit the intangible cultural heritage of Newfoundland and Labrador's family fishery. We also do advocacy work. We advocate for a sustainable and equitable small scale fishery that can help combat climate change and contribute to food sovereignty through better local seafood access. We are a registered Canadian museum and we also um, generate revenue by providing wonderful tourism um, experiences when you come to visit our beautiful province. We developed the Girls Who Fish program, well, most of our programs really in response to this overwhelming concern that our founders had for all of these big tangly problems that face us today. And we felt that these problems were all centered on the ocean and the interaction that young people and women have with the ocean. And of course, it's you know climate change, which is all centered on the ocean and biodiversity collapse. And we're also worried about how are we going to feed nine to 10 billion people? And we feel like once again, that the ocean has many of those answers for us. This is uh, an illustration of a study that was done over on the West coast of Canada. And it asked commercial fish harvesters what their fishery meant to them. And because it's a fishery that their livelihood depends on, you think that money would be the first thing, but it's not. It was um, intergenerational connections and cultural connections. So that led us to believe that fishing is much more than fishing. And it is, it's much deeper than that. So we began to think that maybe we could use fishing as a wedge to drive some social and um, positive changes within our communities. So thinking about fishing in a different way, using the lens, um, I noticed that you have lots of themes throughout this conference and one of them is a justice lens. So this is the lens from a cod's eye. And when you look through the lens, it turns the community of Petty Harbor upside down. You see now that the sky is on the bottom and the land on top and it turns it right to left. So thinking about fishing in a different way, and not just a commercial fishery or a recreational fishery, but something that has a lot of deep meaning for the people who participate in it. So changing how we view fishing and how it can impact our lives as individuals. Well, this you've probably seen before, and this also stood out to us too, because um, you see where most women are participating in fishing. It's wonderful that we're down here in environmental activism, but getting more women up into the place where they're impacting policy changes and they're um, speaking at conferences um, and they're involved in professional organizations and really driving the change that can impact more women like themselves is very important. So this will tell you uh, a little bit about the program here in Canada. driven and been a creative force for uh, those living in Newfoundland and Labrador since the beginning, from indigenous peoples to settlers. About 100 years ago, 80% of Newfoundlanders were involved in the commercial fishery. And in 1992, just before the Cod Moratorium, about 30% um, of Newfoundlanders were involved in the fishery. And today, it's less than 2%. 
how is that story going to continue if less than two percent of us are involved in it? So that, so that's why, yes, yeah, so that's why I'm doing what I'm doing. Trying to make it accessible and inclusive to as many people as possible. Well, you know, traditionally when women have gone out with their their boyfriends or their husbands or their dads, um, the guys have taken over. Um, take the fish off the hook, put the worm on. And so when women are among themselves, they have to learn to do it themselves. And so then they that gives them really a sense of um, accomplishment and independence and empowerment. But if we're talking about professional fish harvesters and people actually on the water, only about 20% are women. I think that's where the joy comes from, is finally getting to do it yourself. You know, we also wonder about how, what what that means in the workplace. You know, if you're if you're not stepping forward when you're going on a camping trip, um, are you stepping forward at work? Are you letting the guys take over at work also? It's a good one. I just lost my third face. We need to get a, a different kind of hook for you, so a jigger. So I'm putting the fish down, and then I'm grabbing the hook at, near the top. People need to see others like them to start imagining themselves in those careers. If you want um, young women to start thinking about getting into fishing, whether it's recreational or commercial, then we've got to start getting uh, those who identify as female in the boats. And that's what we need. We want, we want more women doing that so they won't be an anomaly anymore. And the, the idea would be to call on those women skippers to take women under their wing and serve as mentors. 10,000 years ago, the, the first paintings on, on caves were salmon. And so why are we leaving out so many groups of people from this activity that has uh, driven human creativity and imagination and even exploration. So we're, we're really missing out on a lot if we're not encouraging the young humans behind us to get out on the ocean and, uh, and make that part of their exploration too. Yeah, I have to, there we go. So one thing that we worried about when our Girls Who Fish program really started to launch is that we looked around and we noticed that our Girls Who Fish program was made up of um, mostly young university age students. And while we loved every one of them, we also recognized that we wanted our Girls Who Fish program to reflect the community um, in which we were embedded. And so it's important that feminism be intersectional. So how could we change that? And that's where our partners are so important to us because it's not just enough to invite people. You really have to um, make the space and, um, and, and literally um, uh, target them. And so that's very important to make certain that they know that they're welcome. And so one of our organizations that we partner with to make space in the boat um, for um, other people within our society who may not have access are indigenous people. And so reconciliation is a very important part of bringing women into the boat. Another organization that we partner with is Association for New Canadians. So making space for newcomers is a priority for us also. And then as we began to work with um, more women from different um, areas of our society and our communities around us, one of the things that began to come forward, of course, was the concerns about food security and food sovereignty. And then as um, COVID came along then, um, and we were in lockdown, there were people were saying, well, we were having trouble getting food. And so we got involved in delivering food to people and helping 
uh, make sure that they had fresh meals of fish or prepared fish. And you can even look at the space that we take up in the middle of the community and see that it is important to us that we make space in the boat for everyone in our community. And so even the structures that we build or the boats that we use begin to reflect how we feel about welcoming people into the boat. And Making, an, you know, making a difference in our community is very important, but also thinking about what kind of impact this has on an individual woman's life. And this is a tweet from Natalie Panic, who is a Canadian space engineer, and she benefits her um, interest in science having de uh, developed from fishing. So where is fishing going to take the next young woman in the boat? And so you can see, this is a picture of me on the left and you can see where it's brought me. Um, I had an early interest in science that brought me to teaching and that led me here to get uh, young people in the boat to get interested in science or fishing or whatever fishing meant to them. And then this uh, young girl is a participant in one of our events with uh, Girls Who Fish. And you can just look at her face and see the excitement on the face as she describes to me. I didn't even have time to bend down and get a different view of her because she was just so excited telling me about her bag full of fish and what she was going to make for supper, that it was going to be so spicy and delicious. And she was telling me about the big fish that she saw and the fish that she caught and the meal she's going to make for her mom. And so what does this fishing trip mean to her? And what does the future hold for this young one now that she was able to go out and catch a meal for herself? So thank you very much for having me here today. And uh, we look forward to sharing the future for all girls and women who get into the boat with us. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Kimberly. It's so wonderful to see how you have really making space for everybody from all age range. And I think it's really important to recognize that, you know, the more we do it, we hope, right? Those That little girl, for instance, would be able to do in the future, making space for other people as well. The same thing as Yinji has been doing in terms of encouraging uh, girls in Japan and women in Japan to be uh, coming together to form this wonderful network and and really are making things that we would not have thought of possible before. So Yinji, how about we turn the floor to you and uh, to talk a little bit about girls, girls Who Fish Japan. And I know that you have a big panelist uh, with our Japanese colleagues coming from uh, the prefecture, from the cooperative, from the university to talk about uh, many of these issues. And I'm not sure whether you're going to do this in Japanese or in English, but if you're doing in um, Japanese, yeah. Kimberly and, 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 and Katia and I would follow with the interpretation. Okay. So go ahead, please, Yinji. Yes, well, thank you. Thank you, Ratana. And thank you, Katya and uh, Kimberly for uh, inspiring talks. Um, and uh, uh, yeah, uh, let me do it in, in Japanese. <laughs> あの、皆さんこんばんは。あの、短くえっと、ま、この御縁というのは、えっとですね、こちらの、えっと、ま、今回のこの世界小規模漁業会議の、えっと、主催側でもある、えっと、too 
規模は小さいんだけれどもその意義というのは非常に大きいというような考え方で、えっと、小規模漁業にあの研究するあのグローバルパートナーシップということなんですね。で実はあの、えっと、本日の,、ま、あのモデレーターのラタナ先生と,、えっと知り合ったのがですねだいあの結構2014年ぐらいだったと思うんですが、えっと、他の海洋関係のプロジェクトであの知り合いましたで同じあのプロジェクトワーキンググループに入ってましてでその時に初めてこの TBTI というあのプロジェクトを知ったわけですねでその時にもうこのキャッチフレーズです無視するには大きすぎるというキャッチフレーズにもう一目惚れしたような形で、えっと、あのもう興味を持つようになったのでどんどんあのいろいろあのあのお仕事でですね関わらせていただくことになりました。でえっと、その本部というのが、えっと、ニューファンドカナダの、えっと、大西洋岸ですねあのニューファンドランドというところにありましていずれは訪れたいなというのをずっと思っていたのが、えっと、本学で、えー、海外研修に行けるこうサバいわゆるこうサバティカル制度というのがありましてそれが2019年ですけどもあのそういうのがあってぜひあのラタナ先生にちょっとあの行かせてくださいとお願いしたら快く受け入れ,入れていただいたので、えっと、1年間2019年度に娘と一緒にあのこのニューファンドランドっていうところにあの行ってきました1年間。で、えっと、これ、まあ、ちょっと当時の私のフェイスブックのとこなんですけどもあの、えっと、2019年の8月ですね、えっと、本日初めてえーとまあ、正式に漁する女子になりましたっていうので、えー、と要は漁現地の漁師さん夫婦があの、まあ、漁業離れとかですね魚離れとなったその現状を何とかしようとして、えー、と立ち上げたプロジェクトであると。なんで、えーとまあ、娘当時が9歳8歳ぐらいで、えー、と2人でなんか参加できそうなものないですかというふうにあのキンバリーさんとは他の、えー、と学会でです。4年前のこの会議です。ここで知り合って、ちょっとあの、えっ、ー、と、アプローチをしたところ、あ、ちょうどこういうのがあるよ。よかったらどうぞということなので、えっ、ー、と、参加することになりました。と<笑>いうもので、えっ、ー、と、まあ、この先ほどのペイティハーバーのですね、あの写真もありましたけれども、こういう形です。あの、自分のカメラで撮ったものですが、えっ、ー、と、まあ、本当に900人ほどの、えっ、ー、と、そういう漁村ですね。えっ、ー、と、もう歴史長い。漁村になりますでこれがペティアバンのこの、えっとまあ、簡易こう事務所的なものですね港のところに、えっと、こうプレハブ的なものが立ってこれがもう、えっと、あのこの漁する女子のカナダの本部というような形になっています。で、えっとまあ、この,そのニューファンドランドというのがタラ漁業で有名な地域ですけども、えっと、そこの今シタベロをですねあのこの地域でそう,いうやるあのそういう伝統的なこの食べるを食べるそういう食文化もありまして、その作業の体験をちょっとさせてもらっているような写真です。で、えっ、ー、とこれがですね、あのまあ、ちょっとそのこれ伝統な漁船です。あのその地域ので今ちょっと見えないんですが、ちょっと操縦体験もさせてもらっているあのことですね。で、そこでまあちょっと支柱を作るためのジャガイモの皮を剥いたりとか、で当日あのたまたまドイツからの,あの今ではかなりこういろいろ活動をされてきてあのだんだんこう知られるようになってですね当時はあの、えー、とドイツからの取材が入ってましたで、まあ、こういう形でえっ、ー、とですねあの、まあ、その漁する女子カナダのごメンバーたちが、えー、とこれはまあロープワークをしながらあのいろんなこうジェンダーの話だとか女性の話をしながらロープワークを学びながらというような感じで,で、まあ、子どもたちはえっと、一人あの企業、社会的企業を研究されているあの、えっと、研究者ですけれども、同じくちょっと娘を連れてき,き,きてました。でも、1分も経たないうちに子供はすぐ仲良くなるものです。こういう形でもうたくさん遊んでですね、であの帰りはこういう漁する女子からいび,いびきする女子へと、あの写真を使おうと毎回娘に怒られますけれども、今回はまだ使いました。と<笑>いうような形で。えー、と何でしょう,こう、参加しながらあの日本でももちろんいろんな環境教育プログラムというのはあります。なんだけどこう、えーとまあ、そういえばあまりこう女性に特化したプログラムはないかなというとかですね、それから1回限りで終わるものが多いんですけど、あのこれはもう1年間を通して、えー、と一緒にこう何でしょうあのみんな一緒になってあのメンバーになるというような感じのがちょっとあの私には新しかったので。
、えー、となんかこう似たようなものが<笑>あの日本でもできるかどうかっていうような感じで帰ってきてですね、えー、と自分の考えをあの周りにいろいろご相談をさせていただいた時の,あの写真ですけれどももちろんあのここにいらっしゃる本学の、えー、と関泉先生にもご相談させていただいたし、えー、とそれからまあそう花井課長もいらっしゃってです、ね、静岡県の花井課長もあの、えー、とご相談させていただいて本当にサポートしていただいたんですけれども皆さんもあのうちの、えーとですね、大学まであの来ていただいて、えーとまあ、話をしてですねえっ、ー、と、うん、っていうようなとこです。で、えっ、ー、と、まあ、やっていきましょうという話ですけど、やっぱり、あの、私たちだけでは絶対成り立たない。要は、漁業者さんのサポート、協力が必要っていうので、えっ、ー、と、それはどうしましょうっていうような、あの、皆さん、受け入れてくださるかどうかっていう話がありました。で、まあ、あの、ちょっとこう、恐れ恐れながらあの、えっと、静岡県皆さんあの県内の方が多いんですけど持ち胸しらす漁業でですね有名なあの持ち胸漁業、えっと、本日そこにいらっしゃっていただいてます、えー、でそうご相談をしたところですねあのまあえっとぜひぜひやりましょうっていうそれからそのこういう運営をする時のいろいろアドバイスまでしていただいてですね本当にあの感謝しております、まあ、この場をお借りしてもう一度感謝申し上げたいと思うんですけどもというような形で、えー、とこう始めるようになってですねでこれが、えー、とその皆さんにちょっとあの知ってもらう参加していただくためのちょっとまあチラシとかのようなポスターのようなものも作りましたでその当時にまあ使ったのが、えー、要は日本この毎年こういうジェンダーランキングっていうのが発表されるんだけども、日本はえっ、ー、ともうダントツいつもこの G7 の中でも最下位というようなジェンダーのランキングですよね。というので、えー、これを出しまして、まあ、あの漁業の世界でも同じであると。なので、みんなちょっと一緒になって、この日本のまあ漁業におけるジェンダー問題をちょっと考えてみませんかっていうようなあの声の仕方でですね。でえーとまあ、基本は皆さんこう漁業について漁村について魅力をしてもらいたいと思ってるんですけれどもそれだけじゃなくて地域全体についてあのぜひこう興味を、えー、と持っていただきたいなっていうあのところもあってですねそれで始めたのがあの要する女子ジャパンというもので、えーとまあ、あの持ち胸地域というのが舞台となっていますで、えー、と要する女子カナダもそうですがあの年齢というのはもう幅広くですね8歳から80歳というような、まあ、同じくそのようにあの考えまして、えー、で現在今は、えー、と最年少で小5学校年生今6年生になりましたで一番上は83歳の方がいらっしゃいますと<笑>いうので月1回ペースで、えー、と開催をするでその日に可能なもので、まあ、あの体験であったり座学を合わせる形でやっていくことにしています。っていうようなことで、まあ、あの年会制定になってるんですけれども、ほぼもう本当に、えー、漁業者さんとか漁協で、もうほぼボランティアであのいろんな協力をいただいていますので、本当にあの心より感謝しているところであります。まあ、ここですね、あのもち胸、えー、と地域の、えー、と駅と、あのもち胸、えー、と漁協ですね、えー、漁業協同組合で、えーと、市場です、新しくできた市場。がありまして、えっとシラスの漁船ですね。小型の日本の、えー、こういう小規模漁船っていうようなことになります。なので、えっ、ー、と、もう本当にありがたいことに、たくさんのところからこういうあの支援をサポートをしていただいている形でですね。えっ、ー、と、あの進めるのは、あの先ほど言いました、トゥービッグの T. B. T. I. の。えっと、日本の、まあ、支部のようなのがですね、2020年に同じくできまして、えっと、そこが、えっと、持ち胸師匠と一緒にやるんだけれども、いろんなこうあの本学も含めて、要する女子カナダも含めて、静岡県、静岡市からもいろんなサポートをいただきながら進めているところですね。で、えっと、こちらが、えっと、今メンバー。になります、えー、と今現在まあ20名ぐらいいる形ですね。で、えー、と本学の学生さんとかもあの、えーとまあ、このサポートスタッフとしてですねあの参加していただいたりとかっていうふうに、えー、やっています。で、まあ、ちょっとした写真ですけれども、えー、と魚の解剖をやったりとかでちょっとこう釣りをしてみたりとかですね。で、えー、とこの下の方の写真というのは、えー、と缶詰。
缶詰を例えば漁業者さんがこれを、えー、と商品開発をするときにどう,どうすればいいのかそういう,もうシミュレーションをしながら、えー、そういう勉強をしたりとかで、えー、ともうジェンダーとかですね情勢についてみんな座ってこう話し合ったりするような形で進めています。というので、まあ、少しずつあの本当に少しずつですけれどもちょっとこう認知度も今ではちょっとこう上がってきているかなと。であのキンバリさんを真似て、マイファーストフィッシュですね、マイファーストフィッシュというのをあのそこの関先生にもやっていただいてますし、あの小学生もですね、こういうふうにあの釣り体験をするような、えー、形になっていまして、私の話をここで終えたいと思います。はい、ということで。OK、uh, Ratana、So that's、um, the end of my, my talk. Oh, you're here. Thank you so much,、uh, Yinti. I decided to pop up here instead. Wow. Right. So it's much better to be here. I said that I would be here, right? So,、yeah. okay, so I know that there's a long list of speakers, and that's still going to be in Japanese. In Japanese,、yeah. Maybe we should continue to <laughs> Okay. Um, えーとですね、okay,、uh, let me try. <笑>えとそうですあの予定ではあのラタナ先生にこう進行をです、ね、モデレーターをしていただく予定でしたけれども、ここで引き続きあの私の方であの進めさせてください。まあ、日本語であのやっていきましょうということで、えー、とそうしましたら、そうですね、あのえー、とではじゃあ、あのまあ、今日あのカティアさんからの話だとかキンバリさんの話もありましたので、えっと、その辺のまず、まあ、あのどのようにお聞きになったのかっていう感想をあの一言ずつああの、えっと、自己紹介も兼ねてやっていただきましょうか。でえっと、マイクをそこに置いてありますよね。はいあのうん、で、えっ、ー、と、どうしましょう。あの、そうか、さいえっ、ー、と、斎藤さんがちょっと急いで、あ、今日は大丈夫なのか。はい。はい。そしたら、えっ、ー、と、どうしましょう。えっ、ー、と、関先生からお願いできますかこの順番でいきましょう。はい。え皆さん、こんにちは。えー、東海大学の関と申します。えっと、私はずっと漁村の研究というか漁村の調査をずっとやっています、まあ、主にフィールドは日本の漁村ということになりますけれどもでその中でですね、まあ、いろんなあの自分の興味あるトピックスはあるんですけれども特にやはりあの漁業水産業と女性ということが一つのテーマとしてありまして、まあ、ライフワークとしても取り組んでいるところです。であのまあ、李先生なんかにも声かけていただいてです、ね、この漁する女子ジャパンの方にもあのちょこちょこ参加させていただいたりしているところなんですけれども、まあ、今日あのその前の皆さんのお話なんかも伺ってやはりです、ね、その関心を持ってもらうということは非常に重要だなということを感じています。えー、いいとか悪いとか好きとか嫌いとかこれはいいんですね。だけどどううでもいいいいとか関係ないっていうのが一番すみません一番あのよくなくてでその、えー、やっぱりこう意識に上らなければ、えー、やっぱり考えてもらえないということがあるのでそういうのがやっぱり大事だなというふうに思っておりますで日本の場合はですね、まあ、まあいろんなことを考えたので、まあ、簡単にちょっと言うとあの日本の場合は特にその会場作業をやる女性もすごくあの増えてきていると思いますしもともといらっしゃると思います。でもやっぱりその女性の多くはですね陸上作業を中心に行っているかなというふうに思います。で私が思うのはですねやっぱりその会場作業でも陸上作業でもそうなんですけどもその重要性を共有できるっていうことが必要なのではないかなというふうに思っています。だから女性が陸上作業を分担としてやるでその時に陸上作業っていうのは漁業の一部であって、えー、海上作業とこの陸上作業が両方なければ漁業という作業が成り立たないのだということをですねそれをやっぱりこうあの一般の人もみんなが認識する
だからそ,そのことによってそういう作業にもきちんと光を当てて、えー、評価するっていうことが非常に重要だというふうに考えております、はい、とりあえずこんなところではい関先生ありがとうございますえー、っとではじゃあ,あの川口さんお願いします静岡県漁連の川口と申しますどうぞよろしくお願いいたします私はあのえっ、ー、と漁協女性部の事務局を長い間やっていましてであの実際にえっ、ー、とあの話をする人は船に乗っている人よりも陸上作業をしている人がほとんどでしたでやっぱり今関先生がお話ししてくださったように陸上作業も会場での作業も同じように重要な仕事なので女性も自信を持って家業である漁業に口を出してほしいな男性ももちろん漁業やってあの実際に船に乗っている自分たちが偉いって言っちゃなんですけどもではなく女性も同じようにあの価値を認めて同じように意見を聞いてほしいっていうのは日頃から思っていましたであのまだ船に乗る女性っていうのは実際そんなに私は知らないので全国的にどのくらいいるのかもよくわからないので今日のお話を聞いてあの陸上作業の女性の価値を上げてもらおうっていうの以上に船に乗る女性を増やそうっていう考え方になっているっていうことにちょっと驚きましたまた反対に男性も本当は船に乗りたくないんだって陸上作業をやりたいって人がもしかしたらいるのかもしれないのかなと思ってジェンダーだとどうしても女性目線の話が多くなってしまって女性の価値を上げるとか女性の力を発揮するってことがすごく多くなるんですけどそうじゃなくて女性を主語にするんではなくて男性を主語にしてもらうのもあの男性が気にしてもらえるきっかけになるのかなと思ったりもしました。はい、以上ですあ,のありがとうございます。ここで本当に、いや本当にあの素晴らしいご意見だというふうに思います。あの要は、えーと、ジェンダーこうイクオリティというふうにあのよく使われてますけれども、最近はやはりその数で同じとかというわけではなくて、その質なわけですね。要は、えー、とその本来であれば与えられるべきその機会というのが、その性別によってこう妨げられることがあってはいけないというようなことであの最近ではイクオリティよりはイクティっていうのを使うようになったとかですねあれあの本当にその通りの,あのことだというふうに思ってますのでその本当女性に限らず男性も漁業やらなくてあの陸上作業やりたい時にはあのやっていいというようなということも考えないといけないですしねありがとうございました、はいえー、とではじゃあ,あの斉藤さんはい、あの本日の唯一の男性のあのからのご意見ということでお願いします。皆さんこんばんは。あのモチムにあります静岡漁協のまだ組合長をやっております。まあ形だけの組合ですけれども、今清水漁協モチムネ所という名前に変わりました。えー、そこで私あの視野数ブネを二かと思って視野数漁業を行っています。えっ、ー、と大田港はな始まって5年くらい取れなかったんですけれども、潮がちょっとおかゆきて、5月に入ってからバカ倒れしております。もう7、8年ぶりかな、こんなに取れるくらい、結構単価もいいもんで、今、結構元気になって、若い人たちも一生懸命働いています。あの、この女子に関して言いますと、3月3日という、ね、沖縄祭り、この時は全国で、あの、お雛さんとか神社花をあげたり女の人を大事にする日なんですそこで両親にとってはどこの皆さんにも女性を大事にするためのお祭りということでその木には大量木をあげておみきを捧げたりしていたんです今はそうなっているところがちょっと減ってしまったんですけれどもまあ持ち胸の方でもまあ若干数名しかもやる人いませんけれども昔はうちのおふくろもそうなんですけど、老後いたり、定置網やったり
、差し網をやったりして、結構海に出ていったんですね。一時、慣れこうなったかと言いますと、特に静岡の持ち船の場合は、河口が盛んになって、先ほど関先生が言われたように、女性は丘で仕事することが多くなって、海に行かなくなったんですね。それと同時に、静岡あたりで行きますと、外に、すぐ電車に乗っていけば仕事がたくさんあるもんですからね。女性が港に来ることはまずなくなったし、もう自分は自分でバイト行ったら仕事をしているもんですから、どんどん漁業っていうのが普通の会社員っていうイメージになってしまったもんですから、女性が入りにくいということもあるのと、もう一点、やっぱり女性が今入ってくると、今閉鎖的なもんですから、何女は乗せんのうちも乗せようかなと思って頼まれて。そうするとやっぱ何女のせんの何かあったらどうするだって何かあるっていう意味よくわからなかったですよね。今別に海だからそんな危険ではないということはないけれどももう救命胴衣もしっかり着てるしあまり持ち目の場合は投げの悪い時は出ないし女性の方が積極的に23人まとまって乗りたいよっていう方がいたら積極的に乗せるつもりではいますけれども今のところこの両数女子会に若干かけておりまして、李先生のなんだかたばごとにちょっと口車に乗せられて、持ち船が主体になるようになりましたけれども、もし漁業にも関係が、あ関係が興味のある方がいましたら、ぜひともご紹介等よろしくお願いいたします。なんかありがとうございます。あのはい、あのえっ、ー、とそうですね、いい言葉をいただきました。あのはい。<笑>ぜひあのそういうあの興味を持っているいらっしゃる方がいましたらぜひご紹介あのさせていただきたいと思いますはいえっと次じゃあ,あの大野さんお願いしますはいとこんばんはえっと私はえっと沼津市静岡県沼津市の内浦というところでえっとマージマダイの養殖をやったりあと他にえっと、時期によって来る魚に合わせて巻き網をやったり引き網をやったり、えっと、実際に海上の船に乗って仕事をしていますで父が、えっと、漁師をしてまして一緒に船に乗って、えっと、仕事をしてますで、えっと、私がその漁業をする中でやっぱりその男社会の中に混じって、えっと、仕事をしてるんですけど実際にその網が重かったりとか養殖で、えっと、魚にあげる餌袋が、まあ、1つ2 0キロくらいでそれを持ち上げたりとか結構、まあ、重労働で大変だなって感じることはあるんですけど、えっと、私自身魚が好きで、えっと、魚と触れ合えることが、えっと、楽しいと思います。でえっと、私は結構えー、今までスポーツをいろいろやってきて結構体育会系なので力がある方なので多分男社会の中でやれてるんですけどなんか普通一般的な女子が、えっと、漁業の現場に入って仕事をするってなるとやっぱりけっ、うん、辛かったり大変な部分が多いと思いますでもなんかそれが無理とは思わなくてどうすればいいかいいのかなって私自身も考えたりするんですけどそのやっぱ漁業漁業ってあんまり機械化が進んでなくてやっぱ力任せな部分も多いと思うんですけどそこをうまく機械化して、えっと、作業を楽にしたりとかあと私が思ってるのはその、えっと、一つの魚を取るにしてもその漁のやり方っていろいろあるからその女性がでもできるようにアレンジしてやるとかそういう方法はえっとあると思います。はい、以上です。はい、えっ、ー、とありがとうございます。えっ、ー、とそうですね、大沼さんはあのえっ、ー、と実はあのえっ、ー、とインターネットでたたまたまですね、インターネットの記事でえっ、ー、と女性漁師さんで頑張ってらっしゃるっていうのをあの見つけまして、えっ、ー、とあのやっとアプローチできた方でですねで急なお願いにもかかわらずあの本当に受け入れてくださってあ,のありがとうございますということなんですけどあとあの漁,漁,、まあ、その漁,漁業の道を歩む時にあのお父様から漁船にこう。
トイレをつけてくださったという話もちょっと聞いたりすると、まあ、なんか心が温まるような感じの,あの話でしたのでまたその辺の話も、ね、お聞きしたいんですけどもね、はいえー、と,とりあえずではじゃあ次、えー、と松浦さん、はい、お願いします。はい、こんばんは、えっと。静岡県庁から来ました。松浦玲子と申します。よろしくお願いいたします。えっとですね、私は、えーま、25年以上前ですね、1998年にあの静岡県の水産の,あの技術職として県に入りました。なので、斎藤さんとか大沼さんみたいに、現場そのものじゃないんですけど、今もなんですが、やっぱ食べ物を作ったり取ってくる人っていうのが、この世で一番かっこいいなって思っていて、そういう方の何かこう一緒にできることはないかなと思って仕事に入りました。ただ、やっぱ市販、えー、と25年以上前だと、やっぱ男の人が水産の社会にいるっていうのがすごい当たり前だったので、女の人として働いてきてどうやってったらいいのかなっていうのをずっと漁業の,あの現場の方とも接する中でずっと考えてきたところがありますただ思うのが今若い人たちすごい男の人だから女の人だからっていうのが全然なくってあの職場の若い人見てても自分とかと違うなって思うのがあってすごく学ばせてもらってます。なんか若い人のを見ながらあこうやってやればいいんだっていうのをこう学んでるような状況です。でさっきのその基調講演の中ですごくやっぱ心に残った言葉があって「居場所を作る」それはあの女性の漁業者さんがとか、まあ、女性がって話だったんですけどやっぱ漁業だけじゃなくて普通の世界の毎日の話でも男の人も女の人もこう居場所があって。自分にできることとか得意なことを見つけるとこう凸凹が全部で丸くなっていくみたいなそういうイメージでいつも思ってるんですけどそういう世界を、まあ、漁業の中でとか水産業加工とかも含めたり流通も入れた水産の中であのやっていくとお互いすごく面白い世界ができるのかなと思っております。あの川口さんと一緒でやっぱ船に乗ってる女の人をこう増やそうっていう発想はやっぱ李先生のお話を伺ったりして初めてあそうなんだって思ったとこなんですけどこれからどんな風な水産の世界ができていくのかっていうのを一緒に見ていけれたらなと思ってます。以上ですはいいありがとうございますえー、と松浦さんはあの漁する女子ジャパンのメンバーでもありますね。あのえっ、ー、と募集この応募リストを見たときに、あ、あのえっ、ー、と県の行政の方があのえっ、ー、と応募してくださったというのでちょっとびっくりしたことがあるんですけども、はい、えー、というのでですね、えっ、ー、とそうしましたら、はい、はい、You want to say something? Yeah, but that's really good. I thought that we should get some conversation. Yes, let's. Okay. Yeah. I'm listening to the translation as well, so it should be quite all right. But、uh, thank you so much for sharing the perspectives. They are really important because they really cover a big range of experience and also perspectives, and also a very good outlook and prospect for girls and women. Uh, at least in Japan, and I'm sure there are examples from elsewhere as well. I know that we have Katia and Kimberly、uh, representing Canada and friend, France, but we also have colleagues from Australia. We have also、uh, from South Asia, because you're representing many countries,、uh, Madhu. <laughs> so maybe you if anyone likes to share the story and Tessu, you can also share a story from Africa if you like. Okay, because we have a lot of different e x p e r i e n c e Or if you have any q u e s t i o n to the panelists or our speakers, please, the floor is yours. So, stories to share to start with girls and women in fisheries in your experience. Do they? Similar to what you heard today. 
Yes. Kate, you like to speak? Yeah, what do, what do, how are things in Australia or in Indonesia or in the Pacific Islands, you know, places that you work? Um, Australia is quite similar, I think, to, to this story in that, um, sorry. Quite similar in that um, women are heavily involved in fisheries, but tend not to go to sea very much. Um, but but sometimes some women do go to sea. So in the Pacific, actually, because so many people in Pacific Island countries catch their own food or grow their own food, there are a lot more women fishing. Tend, they tend to be gleaning rather than going far from the shore on a boat. But in some parts of some Pacific Island countries, women fish on boats a lot too. But again, closer to shore, to do with gender roles and expectations around um, their family responsibilities. So they tend not to be able to go far from shore. One thing that's interesting in the Pacific is that some of the donor agencies have encouraged uh, women to start going onto the offshore vessels more. So they've started training more women to become skippers and they have to work their way through from deckhand through to skippers. It's, it's still small numbers of women. And there's talk in some places of perhaps having all women fishing vessels to try and get around some of the difficulties if you have a mixed sex fishing vessel far off from shore. So it'll be interesting to see what happens in, in years to come because that's quite a new, a new thing. That's uh, very interesting. I saw that, uh, or I heard about that similar story in Alaska. One of my students actually worked in all female crew, crew and it's very different experience working in that, uh, you know, women only or mixed uh, gender. I don't know if the panelists can get the translation because they don't seem to be wearing a headset. Do you want to just briefly capture what Kate said? Or Kate would like to speak in Japanese? Can they hear? You can follow? Yes, we can follow. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Madhu, you like to share some story? There's a lot of, you know, it's important to share experience from around the world because the more we do that, the more we would appreciate what it means, right, to uh, promote gender equality. Madhu, please share the story. Yes, um, so I can share a story about the women's experiences in Sri Lanka. Um, so it's uh, quite um, not complex. It's, it's, uh, there are mixed opinions about women's involvement. In some cases, um, especially in the coastal fisheries and in marine, um, it is considered a taboo for the women to even um, touch uh, a boat. So, and, and it can also vary. So touching the boat and, and sometimes getting on the boat. Um, so um, there are like place-based differences in terms of practices, fishing practices. But uh, in my work, um, in my work, uh, uh, with the dried fish uh, producing communities, what I came across was, uh, and this was an inland community, and um, I was actually surprised that women do go fish. So I um, uh, dug a little deeper into figure out uh, what was happening there. So they go in little traditional canoes, and this is um, a freshwater reservoir fisheries. And then what was happening there was there were these, again, blurred lines um, about expectations um, as to how they can participate and also about who they are. And when I 
uh, was trying to understand who these women are. Um, so uh, some of them were unmarried uh, and therefore they need a livelihood and this is only uh, one of the few um, livelihoods available in that area. So they, they have no option um, but to go um, in the lake. So therefore, um, sort of like out of um, a sense of obligation to take care of everybody in the society, um, in that community, women, these women were allowed to go um, access the fishery. And some women, uh, they were, uh, they had um, um, like widowed women because their husbands were fishers and now they can go. Uh, and uh, but also um, some married women also go, and then I I understood that um, when they go fishing, uh, there are um, expectations around who they can go with. They can go with anyone else but husband. Um, and then mom and daughter, there was a pair that goes fish like that, and uh, and a daughter who's very courageous and and she goes. Um, so so things like that. So varied practices. Uh, but then um, at the end of the day, what I realized was what they prioritize is, um, is the livelihood and their sort of their um, sense of obligation to take care of them and, the, and to make sure the well-being of them um, is prioritized over um, sort of the norms or restricted them with access. And it was sort of like institutionalized too, because they had membership in the, in the fisher, fisheries association. The numbers were like uh, 15 to 90, uh, something like that. Um, but still, um, I found that very interesting how that happened in that community. Uh, but again, going back to the coastal, I didn't see any um, women going fishing. Mm. And they were in the farther down the, the, the chain in, in processing mm. and, and trading, but not in fishing. And it's quite all right to think about different roles that men and women play. But what is important is to make sure that if women are interested in fishing, they should be able to do that. There should be policies, legislation, and support from various governments and organizations to do that. So I wanted to return to the panelists and ask, uh, if you can just speak, I don't know which one of you, but you perhaps can talk a little bit about the role of cooperative in promoting opportunities for women to uh, be directly involved in fishing. Can anyone do that? Rathana, may I speak? Yes, yes, uh, Katia, could you go ahead, please? No, I just uh, going to, to say that uh, in uh, many countries, uh, like in France, in Canada, in Japan, we miss uh, a lot of uh, crew. We don't have people which, who willing to work on fishing vessels and uh, in some places, legislation uh, forbid women to become member of cooperatives. In other places, it's possible. So I think that uh, it's maybe now time to put uh, our decision makers to think uh, um, how to bring women in fisheries instead to import uh, foreigner labor from other countries. And then maybe it's much more easier to maintain our fishing communities and our fishing industry. It is the case here in France too. And uh, as we have all these uh, uh, subsidies coming from European Union, we could think that uh, boats uh, doing a gender plan and promote uh, um, the, the employment of women on fishing boats could get more subsidies, for example, than other boats. Okay, that, that's it's an idea. I mean, we can do a positive discrimination 
to help women to participate in fishing boat. When the cooperatives forbid women participation in fisheries, then we have probably to change the law and allow women to become members of the cooperatives. This is my opinion to find uh, um, people working on our boat and renew our fishing communities and the small scale fisheries uh, sector. Mm. That's great, thank you. So there's a, you brought up also different, uh, another aspect which is about migrant workers or foreign workers. And I think that is a situation in some places, but um, you know, I really don't know the extent to which that is happening here in Japan. Anyone would like to comment on that? Yes. Is that an issue here in terms of labor? ま、話がちょっと出てきたのは外国人労働者についての話をちょっと出ましてえっと日本だとそのその辺がどういう状況になっているのかっていうあの質問なんですけどあれですよね主人お母はそんなにいないですよね Yeah, no, I, I suspect it not, but I think it's the same in uh, Canada. We do have uh, some uh, people from overseas. But anyway, the thing about gender equity, the, you know, we were talking about domestic issues, but we also talk about quite a range of issues. So in some countries, a bit more complicated. In some countries, uh, a bit uh, perhaps uh, you know, less complicated. We have about 10 minutes left for the session. And I just wanted to make sure that uh, we give uh, some final words also to Kimberly and if Katie would like to say anything else, but would, would anybody in the panel like to say something? And then Yinji, I think we would turn, we'll give you the final word for this session, okay? And, and maybe before we go there, anybody else in the, in the room would like to, or I don't even know if anyone listening, um, uh, people attending from um, online, if you have any question, please uh, either raise your hand or type your question in chat. Anybody in the room has any, do you have any question? I don't see any question in the chat either. Okay, how about we end with something positive, okay? So I want everybody in the, in the panelists to put one big message, right? For girls who fish Japan and the women in small scale fisheries, what would be, um, you know, what, what is the future for them, right? What, what do we need to do in order to um, make a better future? for women and girls in fisheries. See, I don't even ask if there's future. I'm just saying what we will need to do, right? <laughs> to do, to have future, to have good future. Okay, one by one, maybe we'll start from from here, the professor. Yes, go ahead, please. Hi, Eto. Hijoni Mutsukashi is Monday. Sorega Wakatara Yatirze, Mitana, the Kuromo, Joto, Arun, the Skedomo, my Tomo, you don't know what an Ato Katagashkari eat data the Kedoto, or Mon Skedomo, and Javataska Hitotsu, and Yapari, so no Ishiketeno, Bani, 
、まああのまあ、男性がじ現実にはまあ男性が今あの漁業の場合意思決定をするというのが非常に多いわけですけどもその意思決定の場にきちんとその陸上作業も海上作業も含めてそういう漁業に携わっている男性も女性も若い人も年配の人もがみんながこう集えるような意思決定の場っていうのを、えー、きちんと作ることでそれによってやっぱりその地域であるとか地域の漁業というものがやはり何かこう閉塞感から逃れてあかまあ次に向かっていけるステップを踏めるようになる。きっかけになるのではないかというふうに私は考えています。Thank you.So, the bottom line is women should be the one making decision.Yes, we write policy, right? We represent, like Kimberly said, we don't represent, we don't influence enough.We're not in a position to make the influence and impact.So, we have to change that to put more women in position. That they can make good policy and decisions. Thank you. Next. Well, 女性女性が意思決定の場に入るためにもあの女性部の中でもよく話をするときにやっぱり誰かがやってほしいっていう感じになってしまってただ誰かがやるとちょっと足を引っ張っちゃったりとかする。傾向女性だけではないとは思うんですけれどもやっぱりもう女性がもう本当にそういうふうに意思決定の場に出たいんだ出る必要があるんだったら一致団結してやっていくしかないのかなという気はしていますまああの女性同士であの That's great. 一緒にだ、まあ、誰かも担ぎ上げるって言うと担がれちゃった人は大変なんですけどもちゃんと応援してあげる言うだけ言ってあの押し出してそれっきりにするんではなくてちゃんとみんなでその表,表に出た人を支えてあげるっていうことを女性も考えていったらいいのかなと自分も含めてですけども思います。Thank you. This is such a wonderful statement. It's not just women in the leadership role, but we need a lot of support, a lot of followers. So, women have to form groups and n e t w o r k to support each other because it's very lonely to be the one in the front. We need a lot of people, right, to join hands and to work together so that women can feel that support and they can then take that leadership role. Excellent. Thank you so much. Mr. Saito, right? Yes, please. Saito san. Just to ask you, I'm going to ask you to ask me about the people who are in the world. I'm going to ask you to ask me about the people who are in the world. I'm going to ask you to ask me. それがね、分かって、分からないと、あの、この、今活動している方向性も、ぶれてしまうんですね。ただ、今やってるのもね、ただ食事を食べるだけとか、船乗るだけでは、なんかちょっと違うじゃないかっていう、今、有機系もうちの方の若い人たちから出てるもんで、どういう方向を求めてるのか。で、今、もともと外国の方々が、日本と同じ文化ではないの分かってるけれど、ただ、どのよう考えてその海に対してね仕事に関して思ってるのか外国の女性の方がもしかしたら主体性持ってるのかもしれないけど今の日本の女性もかなり主体性持ってるもんで海に何を求めてるかによってねかなり変わってくるんですね。自分たちが船に乗って商売やりたいっていうのか取って売りたいのかただ取ってきて物を販売したいのか。いくつかのルートがある中で何を求めてるのか分か,っていかない分からないとやっぱ方向性が見えないとやっぱついてこないんですね。以上です。Excellent.Why don't we ask women what do we want?Why do you fish?And then we can make it happen for women according to their wishes.This is great.So anyone in the room 
is there any fisher woman in the room? Because I know there is one in St. John's and she's ready to speak. Let's hear from Kimberly. Why do women fish? Why do women fish? <laughs> well, you've got to work. So you might as well love the work that you do. And um, being outdoors is just the, the best place to be. It's, um, you know, this room could be anywhere in the world, but yet when I'm outside on a boat, it's definitely Newfoundland. There's something invigorating and healing about being on the sea. Uh, there's a beautiful thing to be able to feed people and provide people with food. It's a very satisfying job to be able to do that. So there's many reasons why women want to work at fishing, just like there's many reasons why men want to work at fishing. The, the whole thing is, is just to be able to open it up so that women have choices. And so that's really what it's about, is providing women with choices. So I think what's important is that, um, number one, we talked about building networks around the world so that women have partners that help them and support them, and that we go forward to the people in our governments who can support us because we need policy change, because we're trying to change historic and institutional inequities in this fishing industry that had existed since the beginning of time, really. And um, we need um, support to um, make those changes very quickly in a short number of generations. So things like perhaps special quotas to help train young women, um, funding so that women can get the Transport Canada training and certification that they need, for example, and um, mentorship programs, and um, whatever women need to do um, to get on a boat and get the training that they need and the mentorship that they need in order to be able to start moving women into that space. And um, it's, it's just all about, it's all about having every career space look like and reflect what our communities look like. Thank That's you. Great. Thank you so much. So, it's about choice, it's about opportunity. And yes, we also want to make good money, just like what men do when they fish. And maybe even more money because women are usually better at managing their finance, right? And we would have saving and we would be able to feed our family and send kids to school and do lots of wonderful things and build good communities to support the fisheries. So many reasons why we could support, we should support women. Uh, we really are running off time. So do the two panelists, would you still like to say something at the very end now, final words? Hi. Hey. ま、未来、でいないと思うんですけど、でもそれそこが私は面白いと思ってて、そういうのをなんかもっとなんだろうな、普通のいろんな人に知ってもらうことがまずスタートになるのかなって私は思います。以上です。Thank you. So we still have to do more to make women very visible and in all spaces. So that is a great point. Thank you. The final uh, speaker please. はい、
トライっていうとこですね。以上です。So you bring up justice and fairness and opportunities, lots of good points. Okay. Really, we're going to turn back to,、uh, I don't know whether Kimberly, you still want to say very briefly, final words, and then Katia, and then I turn it to Yinji. Um, final words. Gosh,、uh, just thank you so much for inviting me here today and、um, all of the learning that's taking place and all of the partnerships and fellowships and connections that are being made are going to last throughout your lifetime and inform your work that you do and、uh, provide support and、um, help you move forward. In this very challenging field that you've chosen. And so,、um, kudos to everyone here today. And thank you very much. And、uh, thank you so much for getting women in the boat. And thank you for being such a strong leader and a wonderful role model for all of us, Kimberly. Katia.、Uh, thank you very much to invite me. I follow what Kimberly just said. So, the most important for me is uh, first uh, to look what women they are doing in fishing communities and then leave them the choice to do what they want and then give the support, the public support、uh, that they need to continue their activities. That's all. This is great. Again, going back to choice, opportunity. Yinji, please. Your final word, and let's close.、Uh, yeah, thank you so much. I, I just really like the, the words, Japanese word, ichidanketsu, as it means togetherness, right?、Um, and I think girls who fish is just the、uh, ichidanketsu togetherness. We're going to be really strong and、uh, to make women more visible, and、um, just girls who fish is power, <laughs> okay? あ本当に今日あの皆様あの、えー、とご参加いただきまして本当にありがとうございましたなんか時間が足りないんですけどもあのはいえっ、ー、とちょっと時間もねあの,あの過ぎてますのでここでえっ、ー、と切りたいと思います本当に今日あのパネリストの皆様も and, and you r e f e r e n c e n thank you so much and everyone in zoom thank you so much for joining us today thank you Okay, so I'm sorry, I'm sorry.